All right, whenever you're ready. Okay. So although the main purpose of school is to educate and prepare children for adult life, early education actually benefits us in child development and social growth. Lev Vygotsky, a man who studied child development, once said, the true direction of the development of thinking is not from the individual to the social, but from the social to the individual. Today, I will be informing you on how the school institution helps promote social development and early childhood education. Since we are all adults here, we may one day want children. And since we all go to EIU, we must value education. So it will be beneficial to know more about how school promotes social development and socialization. In order to know school's influence, I will be discussing the transition from the family to the peers, the forms of socialization in the school institution, and how it promotes development. First, I'm going to discuss nature versus nurture and the transition from home to the classroom. Nature versus nurture plays a key role in how we study the social development and is the foundation that drives the transition from home to school. In a journal article written in 2019 by Kaplan et al, The Nature and Nurture of Social Development, Parenting and Genetics Takes the Case <coughs> on Social Influences. Nature and nurture shapes ideals and development, and one is not superior over the other. Nature is our genetic background and what we have inherited from our parents, the things we cannot change about ourselves. Uh, nurture, on the other hand, are the characteristics we develop through the experiences we have. Our environment drives our nurture. In a 2010 journal article written by Adriana Rizno Veynu, this called the Student Socialization, a Real and Actual Change for the School Organization, for the first few years of life, family is our social group. There's no structure before we go into school. As children, we rely on our family for all support and fulfillment we have. Um, we have little experience with others. Families also have hidden values, especially with children, where they're always accepting and supportive no matter what you do. School age, however, you must learn to be more self-reliant and less on the family. This acts on what is learned about the new environment and school is the first time of autonomy and being oneself. Next, I will discuss the different ways to socialize within school. The big thing whenever we're children is play, and it's very important to our social development. According to a 2016 journal article by Christopher Brown, kindergartners get little play, why does it matter? He highlights that children can develop academically, socially, and emotionally with play-based opportunities in the institution. When given these opportunities, kids can interact with other kids their age and become more relatable in a familiar setting. This also gives a chance to promote problem solving and understand the basis of social interactions for the future. Gil Nome and Bailey Triggs in a 2017 article called Social Emotional Development highlighted that relationships are necessary at any age to become successful in the future. Noam and Triggs agreed with Brown and said that good relationships in early childhood benefit them and allow for better control and less problems in social and behavioral parts of life. These relationships also expand perspective and problem solving skills in real world situations. The freedom that children get within classrooms is very important to their development. Freedoms allow autonomy and self-determination, which as I've said already, is very important. As Adriana said, school provides more autonomy, but she highlights three different ways that solution. The first is the transition from family to school. Children rely on the family. However, with school, they need to do things on their own, which promotes autonomy. The second transition is from a community group to a societal group. The family is more structured like a community where they support each other, but they're pretty similar. However, the classroom is more like a society made up of different people with different backgrounds, all here for the same purpose. The last shift is from the family to peers, and this brings individuality. 
Families come from the same backgrounds. However, students come from other backgrounds. The autonomy in early education makes them one among many. In a 2014 textbook called A Child's World by Ruth Feldman, she highlights that early education is from ages three to six. During this time, development is pretty steady in all areas. Psychosocial development is strongly influenced, however, and this is due to the transitions that I just mentioned. Children become more important to other children, and autonomy and control increases <coughs> as their gen gender identity develops. The writers also note that children may focus on family, but begin to be more imaginative and sociable for play and socialization. Within early education, and when given the opportunity to play, they would, oh, and not given the opportunity to play, they would lack early social skills needed for meaningful relationships. Early education is vital to kids. Early socialization drives the relationships we have now and forever. Whether it is nature versus nurture, the transition from families to peers, the role play has in our development, and the freedom at school, one should always be familiar with this. Early socialization shapes communication our whole lives. As Stephen Covey once said, seek first to understand, then to be understood.